Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Country Chemist. We're gonna be going over one of my very favorite subjects, and I haven't talked about it in a long time, and that is color correction. So this is color correction in regards to 3D foundation only. So I'm gonna explain a little bit about what it is exactly, how it's different than Demi, how you can use it with 3D foundation, and some tips and tricks. Some of my favorite tips and tricks that color correction can do. So if you wanna check it out, please keep watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and thanks for being here. Okay, friends, let's talk a little bit about color correction. I have not done a video on this subject in quite a while, and I feel like it is needed. I've seen some interesting choices for color correction lately. So I'm going to show you and explain to you. I recommend some that are, I guess you could say like tried and true that I've seen work time and time again for countless clients over the past five years of being an artist and why some I don't recommend right. that just don't make sense. So here we go. What exactly is color correction? So when I'm talking about color correction, I am talking about 3D foundation only, okay? We are not talking about Demi Color. Demi Color is a completely different way of doing makeup. Demi Color is never layered, okay? So we never put, this is not a color corrector, it is a filter to be used directly to the skin with nothing over it, uh, and this should not be over anything else. So, Demi Color is very different. Creams are different formulations. The magic is the fact that you need very little and you have no texture, but I don't feel like Demi Color is for everyone because it can be difficult to learn, okay? So, Demi Color does use the color wheel and uses color science to filter opposite tones. It's not the easiest to learn. It is not for everyone and is a little bit more time consuming to apply depending on the person and what you're trying to filter. So I love Demi Color. There's nothing that will filter a blemish better, in my opinion, than using Demi. But for large areas of the face, it can be very time consuming. And so 3D foundation is my choice for large areas and for like large areas like redness like for me for example so i have rosacea pretty much across this entire area here and here and if i was trying to filter that with demi it would be very time consuming and i would be able to i wouldn't get the same look as if i could just use a real quick 3d it takes so much less time. So I do feel like there are better options for each concern, if you will, okay? So I've done plenty of videos on Demi explaining, showing how to use it, why it's different, how to use it with 3D in the right way. This is a filter, not a color corrector. Please don't try to use any of these in the way I'm showing these color correctors with 3D foundation, because they are very different. Okay. So when it comes to 3D foundation and color correction, it is highly dependent upon each person's face. It depends on what you're correcting. So I make this really clear. Color correction is only for color issues, okay? So this isn't something that you're like, okay, I have a double chin and wrinkles. Can I correct those? Those aren't color issues. That is texture, that is contours of your face. Those are things we can help with 3D foundation by disguising them. Um, certain application methods that will help distract, but there's no makeup that will color correct that because it's not a color issue. So when I'm talking color issues, I'm talking about things on the face that are contrasting to the skin around it. Okay, so like I said, rosacea. Rose, rosacea is often 
really red. Sometimes it can be redder than other times. It can flare up. It is a difference in color than the rest of the skin. So I tend to be red with my rosacea mainly through here. And you can tell this is a different color than, well, it's hard to tell me because I have a lot, but my neck, for example. Okay. So my neck, I have no rosacea on my neck. I don't have a whole lot of hyperpigmentation on my neck either. That is another color issue. So dark spots, freckles, really dark spots that are darker than anywhere else on the face, that's hyperpigmentation, that's excess pigment. Um, you don't necessarily have this across your entire face. You just have certain areas that are darker than others. That's a color issue. So if you're wanting to cover that, you can't use a shade that's going to be matching this lighter area. It's not gonna give the same coverage because they're two different colors. Probably the most prevalent color issue I see that people ask for extra coverage on, can you guys guess? Under eyes. Under eye dark circles, um, they can be varying shades, all right? So whereas hyperpigmentation also can be, there's much lighter hyperpigmentation, there is way darker. It can vary from person to person, and that's what I call contrast. So for me, I have a lot of freckles covering a majority of my face, all right? You can tell I don't really have many on the neck, but like I have lighter ones, which tend to be more in the green family, and then I have darker ones, which means they have excess blue. If you are a demi girl, you know what I'm talking about, okay? That makes them darker, that makes them darker in pigment. And so again, they are different contrasts. What might give me good coverage on one area might not give me good coverage on the other because they are different colors, different tones even. And I'll get into that more where we, when we talk about good hyperpigmentation color correctors. But back to under eyes. Under eyes are a beast, okay? I'm just gonna say it. They are the number one problem area on most people's face just because the skin under our eyes is so different. You can't apply in the same way. Um, under eye circles can be from a very various different reasons from lack of sleep, diet, the skin there, since it's thinner, it can just be because you are seeing all of your veins um, around your eye. Some are just hereditary. I'm asked all the time, how do you get rid of dark circles? And it's because there's so many different kinds. There's different reasons why people have different circles. Some you can't correct with an eye cream. If they're hereditary, there's, they're not gonna go away with a little bit of caffeine, right? So there's different ways to tackle that. Some clients tell me they have dark circles and it's not dark circles, they just have um, contours around their eyes. So I kind of have this issue where, you know, I have lost volume here as I'm aging, okay? Or you might be just puffy. So the contouring of our face, the shadows and puffiness is not a color issue, that's a contour. And there are application methods that can help disguise that, but it is not a color problem. Okay. So we're talking when you've got blue, purple, or just darkness around the eye, that's a color issue that can be corrected with the right shades. Okay, I already said blemishes. I feel like that kind of goes hand in hand with redness, rosacea. There's varying degrees of redness from if you just have slight redness, kind of in the pink family, to whether you have deep redness or broken capillaries, which a lot of us have around our nose, those are usually deeper and darker, more purple, um, very different than a little bit of pinkness on the chin, and those would need a different color. And then last but not least, I get a lot of uh, people asking for help with scarring. Um, scarring can also varying degrees, it depends on if it's a new scar, whether it's still light in pigment, um, whether it's turned really dark or if it's purple, blue, scarring again, the colors are all different. Um, I don't, excuse me, I don't know how to pronounce it, but vitiligo, 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 somebody tell me how to pronounce that. I've never known how to pronounce it, but that is what, that or hypo 
pigmentation is lack of pigment. Um, scarring can also have that. So that is almost when you have a white ish, like white areas of the face to where you're lacking pigment there. Those are very similar to hyperpigmentation. We just have that opposite issue. Okay, so these are all in the color family. So when we're talking color correction, we are looking at the contrast of your face of those issues that are a different color only. All right, hopefully that's clear. Those are all of my examples. I'm sure I probably missed one, but that is what I hear the most, okay? Redness, hyperpigmentation, scarring, under eyes, blemishes, breakouts, all the things. Those are color things. Those are color issues on the face. We can correct those, right? He is with what and how and the method. So with traditional color correction um, products, not 3D foundation, they are using the color wheel and it's the issue arises to where you then have to, if you're using a saturated color like purple all over the face, there's no way to really like cover that with a still looking like skin, right? You're gonna have to fully use a lot of opacity of product to fully cover a purple patch on your face or whatever the color might be. With 3D foundation, we don't exactly have every color on the color wheel when you're looking at our shades. And you have to remember the way 3D works is very different than traditional foundation, right? So when it comes to 3D, the most important thing is matching the darkest point of your face first. Because even though we have colors that might have undertones of some of these shades, if it is lighter than the area you're applying it to, it doesn't matter if that color's undertone is a good choice. If your skin has a darker point than that color of highlight, what happens when you apply a color too light to an area? You don't have good longevity, it wears off, you immediately see texture, and you have to use a lot of product to get good coverage because too light of a color does not give good coverage on an area too dark, right? So you're building up coverage and then you're suddenly like, I'm looking cakey, okay? That's a color issue. So it doesn't matter if you're using a good undertone, similar to the color wheel. The most important with 3D foundation is making sure we match those darkest points first. And as long as you are following that principle, you can use the rest of our certain colors for color correction, and you're still gonna get it to lay good on the skin, you're still gonna get all day wear, and you're gonna get great coverage with very little product. And so this is what I discovered for my own face and what made the biggest difference in my application allowing me to get very skin-like look with very little product and far less product than when I was using just one main shade and a brightener. I use far less for coverage. So let's go over kind of some of my favorites for every issue, if you will, all right? So when it comes to our highlight shades, you guys know I've said this time and time again, all of them are yellow-based to some degree. We do have our very first pink undertone shade, which is Versailles, but the rest of them you can probably tell are pretty much in the yellow family. And then we, as we get into the more saturated tones, it goes almost into that orange, even red undertone shades, okay? And that is as we get more pigmentation on our face, that's naturally what our face has. More pigmentation gets into those tones, all right? So let's first talk color wheel, okay? So as we were saying before, a lot of people have redness, okay? And so we have kind of always, I think a lot of people have probably heard that green cancels red. Um, even though in Demi world, we've learned that most of this is not excess red, it's excess purple. We don't actually use much green, we use more yellow and this is why a lot of our yellow based shades will all kind of color correct redness to a degree because they're all a little bit yellow right we do have one shade that is undertoned of green okay and so i would say 
out of all of the people I've rematched that are having issues with their makeup, the number one reason is because people are given this shade for redness and it does not work for all redness. So um, our one green undertone shade is, can you tell from looking right here? Okay, this is June. Okay, now if you swatch this heavy enough, you'll probably be able to see the green undertone in it. Hopefully, maybe, maybe not on camera, but this shade does have green undertones. Okay. So what's that mean as, and I'm just going to say, this is not something that like, uh, you need to co color match yourself. That is why there's an artist program. You should not have to figure this out for yourself by any means. You don't understand these products like an artist should You're having any of these issues that I'm talking about. Just fill out my color match request. I can help you tell you why a shade wouldn't work or could work for you and why I can explain to you your options, all right? So I'm just showing you guys this because this is what I see so much, all right? So any artists that are listening to this, if a customer has redness, don't just give them June because it's the only green undertone shade, please, okay? Redness is varying degrees, like I said. June is actually one of our lighter shades. Do you see how light that is? Do you think that that would actually color correct my redness? But I see people with as much redness as I have color match to this shade. This will immediately give texture. It's not gonna last more than an hour or two. And I'm gonna have to use so much to get it to cover my redness. So even though it has green undertones, it is not my color corrector, all right? It is not my main shade. Somebody has to actually be close to the shade June in order to use it as their main shade, right? Number one rule, match the darkest points first. So June is not a very dark color, okay? In fact, all of these shades up here are our very lightest, okay? June, I would say, is kind of in that medium category, medium to light. It is not a dark highlight shade by any means. So if somebody has depth to their redness, unless it is pink, okay, not what I consider red. So I consider mine red. You also have to um, be able to recognize when something is pink, slight redness, to whether they have redness or deep redness. There are so many different degrees. Of redness so mine gets deeper in here by the nose because that is where I have broken capillaries my redness is pretty light through here but it is deeper where my rosacea okay so I'd say light medium deep okay that's how I would classify mine if I had to use my face as my guidepost right okay this will not color correct anything on my face because it's it's lighter than that okay so if you're using june as your main shade or corrector but you are tan or sunless tanning or anything i guarantee you you're darker than this shade unless you are okay um so that would be the number one color i see misused within color match i'm not saying it cannot correct it certainly can um, and the undertones of it make a really great color corrector for people with slight redness, all right? But if you have deep redness, June will not work for you. You'll need a color to match the depth of your redness. Then we have one shade up, not a whole different, lot different. Okay, this is amber. It's only one shade darker than June. So we have June, amber. Okay. In my opinion, there's more people that can use this shade than this shade for redness, okay? Now, amber has very warm undertones, but I find most medium skin tones have just enough depth to their redness that they need amber over June. And amber color corrects redness beautifully. And it also color corrects some of these other color issues that I'm gonna be talking about that June doesn't. So June, you do have to be a little bit careful 
um, because those green undertones can actually make, if you have any green in your skin, it can actually make them stand out more. So I actually just saw this yesterday with a client and she was saying how green it looked around her mouth and she was using June and it's because she has, she had very strong green undertones. So if you put green over more green, it, it, it almost makes them look jaundiced in a way. Um, it's not pretty. Okay. And so you got to pay attention to that and you got to pay attention to under eyes, that under eyes that might have purple. What does purple and green make? Green make blue. Okay. So it doesn't actually color correct. It's just going to give you a new color. So if you are using June under your eyes and your eyes are still not getting any coverage, it's because you have purple under your eyes. So you do have to be a little bit careful um, with some of our shades, depending on the undertone it is, um, and kind of pay attention to what it's doing on your skin. So if you feel like it's making green pronounced on your face, or if this shade is pulling super yellow, it's usually because you have now applied too much because you actually have darker points. So you might just have to shade up. You might have a little bit more warmth in your skin and just need to shade up to amber instead. So that's something an artist can tweak for you. If you can, if you can show them what it's doing, they can easily make that adjustment. All right, next is my fave and if you, are a subscriber you understand and you know my love for this and this is because I'm almost out of this tin I don't know why I'm swiping with my other hand I cannot swatch with my left hand for some reason all right and then we go into magic mango all right so I am skipping all of them in between um, in my opinion they do not color correct in the same way and so I would say my favorites for redness is June, Amber, Mango. And then we're looking at depth. If their darkest points are darker than Amber, you have to jump them up to Mango, okay? Now, these can look very similar. Like I could color, I could wear Amber all over, but I would have to wear a lot more, okay? Because it is practically at my neck okay but my rosacea is darker than that so when I use it it fades it looks heavy um, it doesn't look like skin because I'm having to apply a lot more of it to get coverage um, because my points are darker okay and so I see a lot of people that technically need to just bump up use mango just use a lot less and then they can um, use their main shade in order to stay matching. Okay, so a lot of times when I'm talking color correction, we aren't talking about just one color all over one and done. Um, if you have that much contrast in your face, not always possible to do in one layer. Okay, so it depends on the coverage you're wanting and how much contrast is in between the shade you're correcting, where it is on the face, and then what shade you're trying to match to, right? So for me, for example, my cheeks are much darker. Okay, a lot of points on my face are darker than my neck, but I want everything to match my neck. Can't use this, this color everywhere because it's too light. So all these areas would show texture and they wouldn't last and I'd have to wear a lot more product on my face. Then if I apply my color corrector to these areas, they stay dark, they stay that depth. And then I can't actually lighten it to match this. If I'm doing one layer, I have to press on my main shade, which is a shade lighter and neutral, to kind of neutralize that warmth. And then I am stayed matching, I'm increasing my coverage and getting all day wear. Whereas if I was just to use this shade, I wouldn't get any color correction, it would wear off, I'd have to use more product. It's that balance between the color combination and the amount of product you're using. Also, I feel like the, the preference of the um, coverage you're wanting. So if you have very little contrast, say you're just a little bit, a little bit darker in one area and you apply it and you apply 
the rest of your main shade around it and you can't tell a difference and you like natural coverage, you do not have to layer, okay? But if you have contrast, like you clearly have a dark area, light area, and you apply that darker shade and you can still tell it's darker, you're gonna have to press on a shade to kind of neutralize it, tone it down. It highly is dependent upon each person's face. It's dependent upon your neck. Um, I have a lot of clients that have a lot of redness on their face, none on their neck. And there's no possible way for you to do uh, one layer and ever stay matching your neck. You're gonna have to use a lighter shade to kind of tone down that corrector and bring it back to matching. There's just no other possibility. So it really depends on your face coverage you're wanting, the level of contrast, okay? So I do wanna explain that. Color corrector is always going to be your darkest shade and is always gonna be the first shade you apply. That's why, number one way to get good longevity, match the darkest point first. So I'm just gonna keep preaching that so everybody understands and gets one thing from this video. As you go up in our range above mango, a lot of these colors, the undertones naturally we have in our skin, a lot of these colors correct kind of at the same time for the darker skin. Tone. When it comes to redness, these undertones are all very similar to amber and mango, okay? They have that warmth, they're matching the warmth, and they automatically are great color correctors for redness, okay? We're talking about redness. Those are my favorites for redness on highlights. Um, I don't feel like any other shades color correct redness. Um, we'll get to sunlit in a second. Now there is one contour color that I see recommended all the time, um, and that is Aspen, okay? So can you guess why Aspen is popular? Uh, I've seen people put in charts because it's blue undertoned. And to me, that doesn't make sense because it's not opposite of red. It's opposite of orange, which orange is in the warm family. So I guess a little bit. Um, but here's my thoughts on Aspen as I've seen it used over the years. It can work on some skin tones, but it will not work on all skin tones. Okay, if somebody naturally has a lot of warmth in their face or skin tone, like me, all it will do is make them look dead. <laughs> okay, what it does, it almost looks more purple to me, but purple's opposite yellow. So what I think it does is because it is so ashy, it kind of knocks out the warmth, okay? But also, what can that do? If somebody naturally has warmth and they're just given Aspen as a color corrector, say their full face is red, kind of like mine, and they put it all over and suddenly you take out all of their warmth, they feel washed out. And I've literally had people come to me and they're like, I look dead. And it's because it's gray, okay? Gray is not a natural skin tone. Um, so you, you don't see me color matching to this shade as my first choice because I feel like it's harder to get a very smooth finish with a contour. If you guys don't know, our contours are much drier. They're not formulated the same as highlights. They don't apply this exactly the same. Um, but I do think this is a great option if you have very minimal redness around a certain point on your face. So... For me, this color is too light here, but if I, because I'm, this is deeper, right? But if I had just a little bit of redness and I was fairer, meaning the redness was not deep, dark, it was more in that lighter category, you know, maybe slight to a little bit red, that can kind of knock it out. And I'm only using it on a small portion on my face. And then when you apply your highlight over it, you're not gonna notice a lot of texture. Now, I do see that this is a texture area for a lot of people. And so this can create some texture. Depends on how, a lot of times that depends on your preference and your skin. So Aspen, I feel like is really good 
actually in a combination with some of these shades because it can knock out the warmth on very deep redness. And I'm talking deeper than this. Like when you have somebody that has very fair skin tone, so a lot fairer than I am, but has very deep, say broken capillaries on the cheeks or just really deep redness that even mango can't kind of um, combat, then using a little bit of Aspen just on the points where it's the deepest, then applying a little bit of whatever, it, de it depends on their skin tone, but a little bit of one of these shades over it to kind of add that warmth back in so they're not suddenly knocking out all warmth on their skin. Because a lot of times people with a lot of redness naturally have a lot of red in their skin, those pink to red undertones. I don't recommend a shade like Aspen if that is your undertones. If you look at your neck and you're red, then you're gonna wanna stick with a warm undertoned color corrector or you're gonna, what I call floating head syndrome. <laughs> Whereas you put a gray shade all over your face, yet you are red from here down, what happens? You're never gonna match. You're gonna ha be like completely canceled out. It's like the same premise of like putting a very yellow undertoned shade all over somebody that is very warm all over their head's never going to match their body and they're they're going to just kind of look very yellow in comparison or very washed out in comparison okay so we always want to kind of tie those tones together um that's one of the number one things i'm looking at as an artist when i'm matching people is what is going to actually flow <laughs> I never want someone to look like their head does not match their body. I don't, that's just not my preference. So you got to be a little bit careful with Aspen. Depends on your skin. Depends on the depth of your redness. Um, I do feel like a lot of people can use it in conjunction with their color corrector to match the darkest points. I don't feel like this is a shade I would recommend for a full face, but even some that are very fair, maybe don't have a lot of warmth in their face, can use this sparingly um, so that their color corrector doesn't pull them too dark or too warm. Truly is very dependent on the person. Um, and I always recommend very small amounts. So hopefully that kind of settled that a little bit. Um, Let's just say it does not work for me whatsoever. Um, I don't feel like it's the best first option for a majority of people, but I have color matched people to it. So case by case. <laughs> so quickly, blemishes. If you have worn Demi, you understand blemishes change on the daily. So I wish I had a good one to show you. I actually had one right there. It's not too bad though. On day one, they're super red and deep, okay? You have to match the darkest point first. So you might need mango one day to match the darkest point. The next day it might have lightened up, um, depends on your skin tone. You might be able to go down to a shade like amber. Then you might be able to go down to June when it's just barely. Or you might be like me and you just use mango on it all the time because that is your color corrector and that's your skin tone. It can vary, okay? So I'd say Same concept applies, depth of redness, and because blemishes can also turn into a form of hyperpigmentation, um, when we get to that step, you'll see some of those options as well, which some were the same ones for redness. So a lot of these, that's why. These can be used for multiple color issues on the face. I know when I color match somebody, it's why I ask specifically what concerns you have. Um, I want to make sure I'm picking a corrector that you're not going to need a different corrector for your redness, for your under eyes, for your hyperpigmentation. I'm never going to give you three correctors. I'm going to try to find one that can be used for everything. Now, you might find over the years of trying um, different things that you might like a different corrector from your eyes than what you use on your blemishes. And that's fine, but I don't wanna ever overwhelm giving you 
um, six shades just to correct for your foundation. Like that's scary and overwhelming when you're new to 3D foundation, but know that there are some other options. So if you're not getting your best results and if you wanna do a little bit experimentation, you guys know I'm all for experimenting with this makeup to find what works best for you. Um, I'm just trying to give you guys some more options, but if ever in doubt, ask your artist, okay? They are your best resource to know what's best for your face, okay? okay. And then I didn't wanna skip over Bella, okay? So Bella is our bronzer. If you don't know, um, I do sometimes use it as a base um, on my face to kind of give me some warmth. Now, I have had some people ask me if to use it for color correction. Um, I'll be honest, when I use Bella as a base, I find I need less highlight. But if I don't use my same color corrector for my redness, dark circles, hyperpigmentation, I don't get the same longevity. I don't feel like it is a replacement. Um, I think it's amazing in the summer so that you have to use less of maybe your color corrector and your main. Um, I do feel like it, the main purpose of why some find it helps with their hyperpigmentation or their redness is that it lowers the contrast of your skin. So I've talked a lot about, depends on how deep these areas are, depending on to the rest of your face. If you have contrast and you're using Bella to even out your skin tone, you're not gonna have as great of a contrast and then when you um, apply your main shade, it's not gonna be so apparent. Does that make sense? So I do find that that's probably the number one reason why some people can use it. Um, as far as hyperpigmentation, I haven't got to that yet. It depends on the tone, depends on how deep it is. I know this does not you know, come close to correcting any of my concerns, but I do feel like it helps even out my skin tone especially when I haven't um, self tanned and like these areas are very red. Like I self tan this morning, so that's why my contrast doesn't look as high as sometimes it does. But sometimes this area of my face is a lot lighter and so I can use Bella everywhere and kind of even it out or use it on the lighter areas so that it lowers that contrast between my darkest points and my lightest points, all right? So that's a little bit about Bella. Okay, I'm gonna try to go through the little uh, the rest a little bit faster because per usual, I'm talking too much on each one. I hope it's helpful, but I wanted to kind of show you guys some differences on my face as well. So let's get into dark circles. Um, I'm gonna say, I already explained why June's not the best option. Um, I'm gonna say a lot of our highlights um, are since they're yellow based i feel like if they're neutral or yellow they really don't do a whole lot for depth and darkness under the eyes unless you have purple under your eyes okay so the one that um does work is sunlit so sunlit is as you can tell whoops one of our our most yellow shade okay um, wheat would probably be our second yellowest, yellowest shade. Um, but so you can see how yellow this is. Okay. Do you see how yellow that is? Now also, can you see how light that is? Okay. So this is June. Um, Sunland is one of those colors. It's always hard for me to classify, but because it, if you look here, it looks way lighter than June. So what's that mean? You have to have purple dark circles lighter than sunlit in order to have them color correct. So I do have a lot of clients that use sunlit to cancel out the purple. It can be hard to tell from a picture if you have just straight purple, in my opinion. Most people have a numerous, like I do, I do have purple, but I also have blue and depth. Um, I do have purple, but sunlit does not work for me. It shows more textured because this area is darker than this. 
Okay, so again, sunlit can work, but it's got your, if you're using sunlit and you're still seeing depth, it's because it's too light, okay? So my rule of thumb with dark circles is if you're using a color corrector or your main shade, whatever your shade might be, um, you guys know I, I don't ever recommend putting your brightener directly under the eyes unless your under eyes are naturally lighter than the rest of your face and you don't have a lot of texture there because it's gonna increase the look of texture. You gotta match the darkest point first. So if you're using just say your normal main highlight shade and you're seeing depth through that, that means your highlight shade is either too light for your under eyes or not a good color corrector, meaning it just doesn't have the undertones to correct what you're putting it over, meaning you've got either more brown, darkness, purple, blue, whatever it might be, but it's not gonna correct it. So certain colors like Candlelit, for example. Candlelit is a nice neutral highlight. I don't feel like it color corrects at all. Um, just my opinion, but I see so many people using Candlelit under their eyes and then coming to me and saying, I'm not getting any coverage under my eyes because it does not color correct the blue, purple, darkness under their eyes. They gotta match that point first. And Candlelit is very similar to June. It's about this shade. A lot of people's under eyes are a little bit darker than that. I know mine are. So my favorites are, once again, Amber, okay? Sunlit, if it's purple, I don't feel like it color corrects anything other than purple, okay? Mango, and then Frenchie, okay? Now, Frenchie is very similar to Mango. Frenchie is a lip and cheek. I do not recommend using any lip and cheeks under the eyes if they're not matte. Okay, the satin formula. I don't recommend putting a gloss under your eyes. It's, go it's not going to set well, okay? So, I don't recommend putting anything else under your eyes. But Frenchie, I've had... So many clients use it. And I'm gonna show you guys the difference, okay? I'm gonna try Frenchie on one side, Mango on the other. So I wear Mango on a daily basis, but I feel like they color correct the same, in my opinion. But I have clients that have tried both, and it's just a personal preference. Some like Frenchie more, some like Mango more. I use Mango on a daily basis because I'm using it on other areas of my face, and I don't need an extra color corrector when mango can do the same thing. So again, I will correct or I will color match you on to whatever is going to make the most sense for your face and if you need any other color correction. Okay. After mango, papaya. Papaya is magical. I've shown this time and time again. Um, my under eye troubleshooting video, I show you how well papaya, mango work together, okay? Um, so I'll link that down below because I'm not gonna show it today, but maybe if I have time, I'll show you how papaya color corrects on my skin tone, really dark points, okay? So there's something about the undertone. I feel like I still, I need to swipe more mango. I don't feel like you guys can see it on here. There you go, there's mango doesn't look nearly as dark and orange and scary when I swatch it that people make it out to be. So mango, Frenchie, I feel like Frenchie is scarier than mango. I will admit, I think Frenchie is harder to fully cover than mango is, at least on my skin tone. But again, it can be dependent on your skin tone. So papaya, mango, magical combination. Once we get into depths of under eyes darker than papaya, we go into the darker highlights, but I will tell you, I can't tell you how many people have used this combination and came back to me and they're like, I've never had anything cover my under eyes so well. The key with this is you always have to put mango over it. It's not like you can go papaya and then go to the next shade down and down. It is something about these two shades together, in my opinion. And you, it's all about application and amount you're using with all of these methods. All of these color correctors can be not working for someone purely because they're applying too much or not enough. 
So if you are applying a color corrector and you're still seeing the issue, then you gotta build it up in thin layers, okay? It's just like a blemish. Sometimes you put some on it, put your main shade on it, you know, then you go back and you're like, I can still see it. Just apply a little bit more. You build it in thin layers, okay? You can't expect just to put it a little bit there and then it's just all of a sudden gonna disappear. Um, if you're looking for that, go with Demi. <laughs> or if you apply way too much and then you're trying to get it back to matching, because you gotta think, what did I say? We're always matching the darkest points first, right? So you're using a darker color to, you know, match the distraction on the face. And then you gotta get matching. We don't wanna just like leave this darker point on our face, right? We're just gonna have to keep it, to get it back down to matching, which means we're gonna have to use a shade over it to tone it down. So papaya, mango, we're gonna go, we're matching the darkest point. We're gonna use mango over it to kind of tone it back down a little bit. We're what I call stair stepping down until you get to your skin tone, okay? Till you get to your main shade or even your brightener if you're doing it under the eyes. So when it comes to the under eyes, it's all about the amount you're using because if you apply too much, it's gonna be too hard to cover or you're gonna be layering so many shades, you're gonna end up looking cakey or heavy or making you look older. We wanna avoid all those, right? So let's get to the next one so I can do this demonstration for you guys. Hyperpigmentation, okay? I always tell my clients, <laughs> hyperpigmentation is a beast. I say that about skincare as well. Hyperpigmentation can vary depending on the day, depending on what your hyperpigmentation is from, uh, depending on sun exposure. Um, I'm uh, avid about my sunscreen, but hyperpigmentation also flares up with heat. So in the summer, my dark spots get darker, even though oh. my face ever get in the sun without sunscreen, but it doesn't matter. Heat will also increase the depth and the amount of pigment that is being produced. So right. hyperpigmentation can be varying, just like your redness if you have rosacea can also flare up on what some days and be less on others. That means if you're using a corrector and it's not fully correcting one day, like I said, you might have to go back, add some more, build up the coverage, or you might need to go darker. So just like under eyes, if your dark spots are still showing through, go darker, okay? Like I said earlier, hyperpigmentation also varies depending on what you're looking at, at your on your face. So my spot here is pretty dark. Like when I use Demi, I have to use O3 at a minimum. Um, they say hyperpigmentation is green. Uh, the reds don't touch that. Why? Because it's deeper than green. It's got more blue in it. It's darker on your face. So not everyone's hyperpigmentation is the same color and tone. So just like with redness and under eyes, they vary, okay? Some people can use amber. If they're lighter and they just have some freckles that they kind of want to even out, amber works beautifully because it's got that warmth that matches the warmth of freckles. Um, I know I have a lot of freckles and using a shade without any warmth can really wash out your freckles and make, pull them gray almost. So if you're using a really yellow shade and you have a lot of freckles and you're wondering why they were pulling you gray and washed out, you need some warmth at it. Okay. So I've seen people use Aspen to color correct hyperpigmentation. It depends on the tone. If you have very gray freckles, or dark spots, it could work. Um, I would say it's not my first choice. But hyperpigmentation can also use walnut. So Aspen is our grayest contour at this level. Walnut is the only other one about the same depth, I would say, and it is warm. So this one makes more sense to me because usually hyperpigmentation is warmer. Um, but it depends, okay? It's one of those things I always say, um, if you have other areas on your face, I'm gonna give you a highlight to color correct. Something that will most likely work for everything. And then it's all trial and error depending on the depth and the shade of your dark spot, okay? So walnut, I know I have some clients that love walnut to color correct. It does not work for me. It just shows texture. If you're seeing texture 
It can because it's a contour shade. It has different texture or it can be because it's too light. Okay. Um, so texture can mean the, sh the corrector is too light for that area. Also, if you're seeing the depth of that come through with after several thin layers, that means that sp spot is too dark for that corrector. You need to shade up. Okay, so here is Walnut, Aspen Walnut. You can see how similar they are. Just Walnut is warmer, okay? But you can probably tell it's still too light for mine, and mine are just a different tone. Does not work for me. Could work for you. You could try it. Um, but my favorites for hyperpigmentation are the same as really kind of redness and under eyes, amber, mango, um, aspen, walnut, papaya, okay? I don't find Frenchie to color correct hyperpigmentation at all. I know some people recommend that. I don't find that it does. I've tried it, I don't know how many times on this spot because it is very similar to mango. Mango works perfectly fine for me, but this does not color correct at all my, I don't know, I guess because my spot is more blue green and maybe that's why mango works because it's more in the red orange family. This is more like a salmon pink, okay? I would say Frenchie is best for medium to darker skin. Um, but again, it depends on how the depth of your under eyes. I have some very fair ladies that wear this under their eyes. Okay, so scarring or lack of pigment, hypopigmentation. Um, I have shown a tutorial over on Instagram for how I covered my scar after my surgery. Um, I used mango of all things. So because it's like lighter, um, usually lack of pigment, it depends on the skin tone around it. So I have color matched a ton of people that way. Um, you are gonna have to use a darker color to add pigment to that spot. And then it's kind of like the reverse of, um, it's very similar to color correcting depth because you also have to almost a darker shade where it's lighter. Um, same thing goes with scarring. Scarring is kind of similar to under eyes because they can be purple, they can be lighter, they can have depth to them, they could be like hyperpigmentation. Um, if you have post um, blemish hyperpigmentation, they just turns kind of dark and deep. Same concept applies, match the darkest tones first. But hypo, lack of pigment, vitiligo, vitiligo, um, that you have to add a darker shade, obviously, almost a step darker than the skin tone around it to add color. Then you go in with that main shade and to kind of even it out and to make it match. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Again, one of the first things on most people, mango works really well. Sometimes people have to go up to those darker shades. Again, it depends on their skin tone around it. Um, but usually one of these shades is a great place to start. I've talked way too long on just colors. Let's do my makeup. I'm going to show you guys a little bit about application. I wanna show you the difference between Frenchie and Mango. And I'm gonna show you guys, let's see if we can color correct this black on my face. I don't know, can we? I'm gonna try. So let's go for it. All right, first of all, when it comes to color correction, I said the amount is key. Um, I usually always recommend my clients starting with either the blend brush or the blush bronzer brush. Things that are gonna pick up very little product. It is much harder, I feel like, to start with color correction with a brush that picks up a lot of product, okay? So let's just start where I normally start. Let's go in with, I'm gonna do, let's do Frenchie. We're gonna do Frenchie on this side, okay? So I'm gonna just use my finger. So if you don't know, our lip and cheeks, this Frenchie's a lot creamier 
than our formulations of highlight, which are a little bit tackier. They're meant to kind of stay put more. Um, so this is a very smooth application. So some people like it because you can really kind of apply really easily around the eye without moving your eye skin, <laughs> your under eyes, right? So um, I'm just gonna use mango in the same way. Okay, I'm just tapping in. Under eyes are all about the amount. So you wanna apply enough that you feel like, okay, that knocked out the blue and purple. Frenchy, I do feel like works in the same way as mango and that it knocks out blue and purple tones. I feel like I already applied way more mango than I needed using that, my finger, because I'd been swiping into this and it was all soft. Okay, so I'm just gonna kinda tap that out so it's not too much, but can you see how it kind of, now, you can probably tell by looking, Frenchy, a little bit harder to cover in my opinion, with your main shade, it kind of can tend to make you apply more of your main. So if you're using Frenchy as your color corrector and maybe you're having issues with creasing or under eyes or whatever, um, try applying less Frenchy, as little as possible. Apply your main, really make sure you're using this. So I hadn't even touched on the perfector yet, which is a crime because I don't recommend any color correction without this. I don't recommend layering any product of 3D foundation without this um, because we're really concentrating on using as little color corrector to correct each area as possible. But layering any shades, if you're using too much product, you can lead to being cakey um, or looking heavy or not looking like skin. Like both of these look very makeup-y, right? This is the only way to remove that excess product. So prepare your perfector perfectly and make sure you're using it for these kind of methods. So as those sit, I'm gonna go ahead and color correct my broken capillaries um, and rosacea, right? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the blend brush. I've been loving this small side like for everything because I can really use a very small amount and just knock it out, right? So if you are brand new to color correction, what I recommend tapping in to whatever your corrector is and this just kind of dotting it on the face, let it kind of warm up as you're doing other, or as you're dotting it everywhere, whatever, like as you're doing another area, prime your eyes, fuse your lashes, whatever, okay? Um, and I'll show you how to blend that out. Less is more when it comes to correction. Just enough to give you coverage without really pulling you way too dark or warm, okay? So I hit my entire nose because my entire nose is darkest point of my face. So match the darkest point first. Go ahead and also hit those purple blue veins on my eyes. I do not want to use Frenchy on my eyes. I feel like it creases more so. Again, that's because my eyes are very oily. I I get better coverage and longevity on my eyes with mango as my base. So again, trial and error. Hey, okay, now that this is kind of warmed up, I'm gonna grab that blush and bronzer brush and I'm just going to distribute it along this entire area by buffing. Okay, do you see how that no longer is just kind of like in one place. This brush is really good for buffing. So small circles and then distribute it on the area. So in my color matches, I mark your face where you need a color corrector if needed. Um, it's a really great place to just kind of tap in and then dot it there, dot it there, you know, dot it on the points. And then you can go in and then just buff on very thin layer, okay? So we always start with color correctors, very thin layer, and then we can add more if you need goes if you're using this you can kind of use one end kind of just tap on a little and you can then buff with the blend brush onto that point 
Now this brush is a little bit harder to kind of blend out. I feel like I almost need to use the denser end. I feel like this end is better if you're going to do it, like just kind of sweep it on a larger area. Okay, but I'm using so little, you can't even see it, but I'm matching the darkest points first, right? And then we can go in and add more coverage. So I'm just gonna keep using this brush. I'm gonna tap onto where my hyperpigmentation is the darkest or where I have blemishes. Okay, and we're getting that nice thin layer of coverage first, kind of evening out the skin tone. Okay, now let's tackle this beast, okay? So when you have a much darker point on one area of your face than the rest of it, um, you can be a little bit more strategic about your color corrector. Obviously this point is much darker than this point of hyperpigmentation, but I'm gonna see if I can try that magic combo. So I'm gonna use papaya and I'm gonna use, actually let's try first, well, yeah, let's try pinpoint of a brush. Okay, so we're gonna use the multitasker It might be a little bit darker than, <laughs> darker than papaya. I'm gonna see if we can make this work. Okay, so I went ahead and matched the darkest point. I'm gonna apply a little bit with my finger. Oh yeah, see how that took, that took some off, but so it's kind of blended out, okay. And go in with a little bit more just where needed. We're experimenting, people. All right, now I'm going to go in with mango. I might have to layer it up. Okay, I'm gonna go in with this brush and go ahead and just press on mango this entire area. Might have been a little bit too ambitious with the black, with the straight up black. I don't think very many people have straight up black on their face, but you guys get the idea. Okay, it's already toned down quite a bit. Um, now let's go into our main shade to kind of keep our under eyes matching and we'll just keep working on this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go in with the blush bronzer brush and I'm just gonna kind of tap. That main shade and we're just gonna to tone down this entire side of our face. Which this side wasn't very far off, but you can tell it still increased the coverage quite a bit. So the best way to get more medium to full coverage is to kind of build up coverage this way. If you want more natural coverage, it's gonna be very hard to apply Frenchie and not apply anything over it. It's pretty impossible, right? Okay, let's go in. And now I am tapping because we can't move that color we just placed, right? Or then we'd lose all that coverage. Okay, it's really hard to get this all the way up to my eye. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this blend brush to get all the way up in that corner. Okay, I do find with this Frenchie side, I have to 
apply a little bit more of my main shade to make sure I'm still matching. It's a little bit harder to cover up the salmon color. Mango's a little bit closer to my natural color. Okay, and then we're gonna keep, whoop, wrong side. Keep pressing. Okay, so we're acting like this is a big old hyperpigmentation spot. We're gonna layer. What happens if the first time it doesn't completely go away? We're gonna apply more. I honestly think I just needed to go a little bit darker with my highlight, but I was trying to show you guys the magic of papaya mango, because it is magical. I mean, considering it was black, not too bad, right? That covered pretty, pretty good considering it was straight black on my face. So not horrible. I mean, obviously I can still see it. I could go in with yet another layer. Let's see if it makes a difference. Like every time I put on more, it looks worse before it looks better. Isn't that the case with a lot of makeup? <laughs> Not too shabby. I mean, I think that's covered better than this is because I didn't do anything but one layer on that side, right? So I feel like I can still see a little bit of salmon under my eyes. Can you guys see that? Do you see what I mean? You have to apply a little bit more brightener or main shade to kind of cover that, but I haven't brightened yet. We're still gonna brighten. So I'd say depending on how experienced you are with 3D foundation, would be what I would recommend what brush to use. Cause like I said, when it comes to like layering three shades under the eyes or anywhere else, it is amount and application method. And the amount can really be a lot or a little. And when it comes to a lot under the eyes, it can be create issues, right? If you have too much, you're just gonna get creasing. It's gonna make you look older than, if you put a powder on top of it, that can really look cakey, right? So this end of the blend brush, I love the buff brush, but this is gonna pick up a lot more product. So I'll show you this one over on this side. And I'm just gonna barely tap in and barely tap on just to kind of show you how I would brighten just this triangle right here, not all the way up under the eye, just that magical triangle right here to give that brightening effect. Okay, I could put a little, I usually kind of go out right here over that hyperpigmentation because it's just one more layer of coverage for me. Okay, let's try it with the blend brush. Same thing, I'm just tapping in. We never swipe, never swipe. Um, remember, we were trying to keep everything light-handed. Okay. Right on that inner corner. And I'm not going all the way up to the lash line, but I'm just gonna go right here where I have a lot of shadowing because that light will bring it forward. Okay, same thing, that's all an application method. If you have puffiness, um, it's all on where you place your bright Same goes for if you have a lot of contour around your eyes. Okay. So anywhere you want to bring forward, you really want to put that lightest color, that brightener, anywhere you want to kind of push back, you can leave that your main shade and that'll kind of give the appearance of 
changing the contour of your face, even though technically no one can, right? I mean, ice rollers and jade rollers help puffiness for sure, but can't change the way our faces are shaped. Okay, and then what is key? The perfecter, okay? So you can tell my under eyes, the coverage is the same. It really does not change the coverage, I don't feel like. I feel like I can get pretty much the same coverage under my eyes with either Frenchie or Mango. So personal preference, if you've tried one, maybe try the other. If you're still seeing darkness, try papaya. Papaya under mango, magical, literally magical. So I will link a video I've done on that as well below. Same thing goes with blemishes. You just kind of have to layer into it until you get the coverage you want. Using a color corrector is the best way to get better coverage with our makeup. If you are finding that you have any points kind of showing through your skin, um, I can't tell you how many times people aren't getting the look they want. And it's as simple as a little tweak of using a color corrector and then they absolutely are obsessed with the makeup. It can be the biggest game changer. I know it was for me. Um, and it allows me to change my coverage on the daily. I still use my color corrector even when I want my skin to show. It just allows me to use far less of my main shade to get any sort of coverage. So don't be afraid that using color correctors are gonna suddenly make you look cakey or it's gonna be heavier. That is what this is for, okay? You have to just learn light hand. And if you're using a corrector and matching the darkest points, you have to use far less of that and your main shade than you would just a main shade, I promise. It's all in just kind of learning application technique and figuring out the right colors for your face. If you're needing a color match, that is my specialty. Um, my color match request is in the drop box below the video. Tell me all of your issues, okay? So what you want corrected if you're using any colors, I always try to kind of see what you're using and what issues you're having, and I can tell you exactly why certain colors might not work for you and what you need to tweak. Or some other options that you can try. If you've been thinking about trying a color correction, it might be the game changer you've been looking for. I'd be happy to help you troubleshoot what you have now. I am going to perfect my face and finish my makeup so that I can show you guys the finished result. But I hope that was helpful. I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions, as always, comment below. I'd be happy to help. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Love you. See you next week.